good afternoon, I guess. It's not morning any longer. Um, so excuse me for tears this morning, but I mean, it's something that I'm just greatly passionate about. I'm just making sure our students, um, we have 24,000 students in our, our school, and we um, are 100% free lunch. So that just explains kind of the access that our students have and the financial stability that they have um, as families. And so I feel like it's my job. Um, I went through Richmond Public Schools where I work right now. And so I know what can be done. Um, granted, it is several years later, maybe three or four, since I graduated from high school. <laughs> so, but I do understand that um, with hardworking teachers and, and a goal, that things like that can be um, fixed. And that we don't have to make sure that um, because of their zip code that they don't get what they need. Um, I'm, I'm a big believer in exposure and opportunities make a difference in all students. Um, I just believe quite simply, if it's nothing more than a conversation to have because they were in the same museum one day or they saw the same painting, that that makes a difference. It increases vocabulary and it does some other great things um, to make you a better person. So when we started, um, going on four years ago now, there, were, there was a school that we were getting ready to close. Um, the enrollment, as I spoke about before, there was a middle school. For some reason, our students are leaving when it's time for middle school. Um, and I kind of understand that. I mean, there's some, you know, parental decisions that are being made as far as uh, schools not being accredited. You want your child, to, especially in middle school, to get what they need to, to excel. Um, and so we, we always wonder, why are they leaving? Why are they leaving? Um, and how can we get neighborhood and community support? And so um, the superintendent at the time, um, there were about four of us who made presentations to the school board. Um, how can we save this school? How can we get the community to support? And how can we keep students engaged? And again, you heard me talking earlier, not about um, academic achievement, because that's not my area of, of reading and writing to a certain extent where I can, I can devise the literacy plan and that sort of stuff. I can be a part of it. That typically falls on the English coordinator and so on. And so I had to, to enter this conversation in the only way that I knew I could give 110%. And that was through the arts. Um, how, how do we do this? Engage students, but also prepare teachers and administrators for something very different. How do we do that? And so we made a proposal, unanimously it was voted on by, by the school board. Then of course you go into to immediate shock, because then you go, okay, it worked, now what do I do? <laughs> now this is real, I didn't have anything but one sheet of paper. <laughs> um, and so I, I was able to sit down and find, do a little research and found out that um, the Kennedy Center had something already in progress with, with arts integration. Didn't realize at the time that Richmond Public Schools had a partnership with, Rich, with the Kennedy Center called Partners in Education. Uh, we were downtown last year, and I got forced to go to the conference because we were going to lose our partnership. Showed up to this, the conference that was the best conference I'd ever been to, an arts integration conference, where we talked with art, um, artists who taught us how to teach math through dance and music. Very strange, because it was the first time I had seen a name put to it, although I believe that's the way I learned but I, it didn't have a name. Um, and so I left that conference thinking, oh my goodness, here's the answer to the problem. Um, and so in doing so, I found out there were people in our area that had done some research and done some, some other uh, things with arts integration. So I said, who can we talk to? How can we do this? But bigger than that, I need the community support because this was gonna be new. Scores were not gonna come up immediately. And that was one reason why parents had expressed why they were leaving the district. Um, I want my student to pass. I want my child to be in, on the honor roll and, and, and all sorts of stuff. And so how do we get to that point? And so again, the discussion was never around you know, SOL or standard scores for being raised. It was about getting bodies in the seat because we knew if students were in the chairs, we could teach them anything. Um, but with parent support, we could teach them even more because then they would be able to help support it. So we did it in three years. So like I said, we now have um, a waiting list. Um, the school is, we, I mean, people are knocking on the door to be there. And it, it requires nothing but a zip code that you are a Richmond City resident, which is amazing. So we didn't require that they have any music or art experience, that they, you know, came with any, anything. They didn't even have to own an instrument. You come, we'll teach you everything you need to know. And we've been very successful. We've made small advances, like I said, 8% in the writing score this year. Um, that's in addition to 3 and 5% for the past two years. But those small steps will sooner or later turn into bigger steps just because we have that determination. Every teacher in that building has signed up to be an arts integration teacher. We were able to wipe the school out and give every teacher who was there that wasn't interested an opportunity to transfer. So every teacher that is there now is getting 
the proper training to be there, not just from us, but the district hired two people because we started a partnership with the Turnaround Arts um, through the Kennedy Center. We were selected as one of two schools, which is awesome and amazing. As part of that, you are assigned um, an, a world-renowned Grammy artist. So we have Jason Mraz, um, we have Speech, yes, <laughs> and we have um, Van Zanes and Claudia, uh, who visit the school at least once a year and talk and walk with our students. As a result, our students have been in two of Jason Mraz's videos. Um, yes. <laughs> they have, um, they have uh, worked with Claudia and Van Zanes, who were Grammy Award artists, and um, Speech came over and talked with the students that were performing the lowest in the school. I mean, he had a one-on-one -on -one with 10 boys you know, to say, look, you can do this. So those kinds of things, which aren't the target of the <coughs> arts, but it does help when you tell kids, look, you're gonna be in a national video, <laughs> you know what I mean? <coughs> so they spent a day with, with Jason Mraz, which is the one school that we started with first. <coughs> Jason Mraz, when he comes home, he stops by the school. We don't even know that anymore. He just stops by the principal, has his cell phone number. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, um, you know, that, those kinds of things encourage students to want to be there and want to excel. Um, and we looked at how does this information transfer, which is one of the biggest challenges. How does this information transfer to that standard test, right? Because ultimately they've got to take that standardized test. Um, but we do, um, you know, PBOs and we do projects um, to show arts integration um, as a big picture. Every nine weeks there's a big project-based um, big picture, doors open to the public kind of thing where, te where teachers and students do a project with arts integration. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a weird way of thinking. It's um, not easy, but again, I go back to the fact that um, the arts have never hurt anybody. We've never had, there, there's no research to show that if students are enrolled in the arts, that they will decline or descend academically. Zero research. And so if for nothing else, let's put them in there for engagement. Let's keep them, they come to school for the arts. Right? Some, some kids come because they play the violin, they play in band. Um, just to prove to you, we had senior cut day, my senior year in high school, and I would not participate until I the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> so my friends were like, we'll be at the park and we'll come pick you up and then go back to the park. I was like, that's fine as long as I get the orchestra. Um, but it, that kind of thing, you know, I don't know if you remember my story where I said, I hated school. I was not interested. I, I struggle with math, I struggle with comprehension, and because of those two areas, science and history were very difficult for me. You know, I couldn't read the history very well. I read it, but it was just words. Um, and so, learning through music, I luckily had an art, excuse me, a music teacher that would teach me fractions through the music that I was reading. You know, I, I kept first chair, so I, I was, you know, truly determined to stay in first chair. Like, you know, so I was competitive, and because of that, I had to do all my other classes because if my teacher found out, I would be in trouble. <laughs> you know, I mean, that would, it would come down to the wire of maybe you're not the leader I thought you were. And so all of those things would have played a big picture in me wanting to be in school, where I ended up with uh, 11 years of, of perfect attendance after that. Um, so it's one of those things where we know that music and art can engage students. And so we want music and art to be for music and art's sake in its purest form. But if there's a student who we can bring into the picture and navigate through a back door to teach them how to, to do those fractions, then let's, not, then let's try it. Why not? So that brings me to what arts integration is. And so there are different ways to do arts integration and it's work for us. In the purest form of what arts integration is, it's like a co-teaching model. It's the math teacher teaching math in its purest form, whatever the content is. The, the music teacher in its purest form teaching that content. We're not gonna ask the math teacher to teach music. And so we, we need to, that to be clear because that's very scary. A math teacher teaching music is like, no, I'm not interested. So we want everybody to be very secure in what it is they're teaching. Math, here's your content, here's your content. Let's see where the merge is. Let's figure out where these concepts are that are difficult for students and can be covered in both areas. That's one way to do arts integration. That's in its purest form. And that's what we've been able to do with, um, you saw Lisa Perkinson, which is a teacher at one of the schools, and we studied geometry in her class. And it, it talked about things of, you know, your arm span. How many twirls can you do in a room this size? They had to measure the room, they had to measure their arm span, and they had to, you know, basically have a hypothesis. What do you think? 
how many can you do? Let's make this a word problem. Let's make this a math problem and figure out what the answer is. And that's tough because they had to measure that. They weren't given the measurements. They had to measure. They had to figure out the spacing. There are two big poles in the middle of the room. You know, so all of that came down to the wire of who, how do we create this math problem and solve it? Um, and that to me is one of the top levels of Bloom Taxonomy. It wasn't remember, it wasn't identify, it was analyze, create. Let's go all the way to the top. <laughs> and so um, when we look at those things, you have to understand in music and art, we start at the top and then we work down in Bloom's Taxonomy. And what, how do we get to remember? is when people ask us to do things out of the age appropriate and music appropriate levels, and then we have to teach by rote. So we don't like to go down. We want kids to learn what they need to know at the very top, um, and at the top of Bloom's taxonomy with creating, analyzing, and all those areas that we challenge children that we typically don't think will succeed with a challenge or, or with, with that kind of thinking. So um, the second way to do some arts integration, we can use it as a strategy. Um, where there's an, you know, here's a difficult concept. Maybe a, teacher, maybe a kid just doesn't understand fractions. And the music, uh, math teacher says, I took music all the way K-12, so I do have a little background. So let me just introduce you this little concept that I understand, and let's work through music and have fun with it. So that's a second way to do it. That's not necessarily the preferred way because we want it to be where everybody is comfortable teaching their subject. Um, however, I'm very interested in math taking place outside of the math classroom. Why do we have to sit in rows in, in a chalkboard? Why can't we learn those concepts in a dance room? Or why can't we learn science, do an experiment in the band room about sound and adjusting string, um, you know, the tightness of a string or the size of a bridge? Um, why can't we do those kinds of things and still learn those math concepts or science concepts outside of that science room? Um, students don't even know what they're learning. I mean, they learn it so quickly, they ask, you should hear the questions they ask as a result of looking at it from a different perspective. So that's what we're doing in Richmond. <laughs> and I'm very excited about it. Um, we're doing a number of things with music um, because I do believe that our foundation with music starts in pre-K. And in the state of Virginia, we're not required to have music and art in pre-K. So we have a wolf trap um, group that works with our early childhood students and we have music together working with some of them, hopefully, to, to get that brain started, you know, in the right way. Because we know those first three years are the most important of any child's uh, learning experience. So K-12, if we are looking at now, what does the music and art experience look like in Richmond Public Schools? Because it's my job, um, not anybody else's job, it's my job to make sure that they touch on every genre of music and art um, in K-12. And, and I will make sure it happens, as long as I'm there. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I want kids to have real life opinions and real life understanding of, of what it is to be and to appreciate the arts. It's a discipline. Um, it can't do anything but help. Um, as Daniel Pink said, <laughs> um, he, he, he's major. You know, we have to believe what he says. Choir. I mean, you think about students that sing in a choir. Um, it, it is very peaceful. It's very. Um, rewarding and not just that. I mean, you think about the learning and the reading that takes place in a choir class. Students have to read. They can't sing without knowing what the words are, right? So, um, you know, the other piece to that is, you know, 70% was the big thing that came to me when I first started. You know, SOL score standards, you 70%, you're good if your class is 70%. But I often think about that in music and art and think, if I put 70, if I put 100 kids on stage and only 70 of them played the correct note, who would come back to that concert, <laughs> right? And guess what would happen? On Monday morning, I bet that music teacher would be called into the office, because that would be a mess. So we have to, there are only two ways to think in music and art, and that's proficient and mastery. Because we cannot put a product on stage that's 70% ready. We can't put a piece of art on the wall that's 70% ready. So you have to look at what are those teachers doing in those classrooms to get that proficient and mastery level of learning. Um, so those are you know, just some of those things I think about. So raising that bar for our students is the minimum. I mean, that's for me to think our students will be proficient in music, you know, in, K in their K-12 experience. 
Um, does anybody have any questions for Christy Joe? Yes. <coughs> I'm Susan McGreevy Nichols. I am the executive director for the National Dance Education Organization. Oh, and very nice. we're, yeah. <laughs> we're in Maryland. Um, I'm going to give you my card. Thank you. Um, my expertise is arts integration. I used to work for the Gale Institute. They had a CSR yes. model, um, and I'd be happy to come and do a workshop for your teachers. Love that. I've written five <laughs> textbooks that, oh, that focus from dance integration. Okay. We just started our dance program in Richmond two oh. years ago. Well, this is the first full year. Um, and just to say, we, we put a suggestion box out there. How many of you would be interested in one of our local high schools? And we had more than 100 students sign up uh, for the first time. So. I, I taught also, is, um, I taught in uh, Providence, Rhode Island for 28 years in an inner city middle school, 99% free and reduced lunch. And I know it works. it works. 600 of 900 kids were involved in the dance program. And the whole school was structured around teams using the dance program as the structure. I feel like I've fallen into heaven. <laughs> <laughs> so I know it works. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. In Philadelphia, one of our schools, uh, there was actually a lot of gun violence in the neighborhood to the point that they brought the children into the school immediately when they arrived. They did not line up. They went right into the building. And the principal, at the Macarena every day <laughs> in the gym, and all of the children danced together. And she did one, it was basically synchronous, and it, again, the dance actually normed the student population and made a safe space. And, when, and she didn't have to have the faculty there because the kids all knew that they were going to dance during this behavior. And so I've got the solution to the high school students reporting to school before the research says they should. Why is your first period not a choir class? Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That will not solve the problem. Well, I think it will. Were you going to need to hire additional staff in order to do that co-teaching model? So yes. Um, part of the Turner and Arts uh, program requires that we have a program director and an implementation coordinator that receive training through the Kennedy Center. So yes, we did have to hire two employees to do that. But not additional teachers? No, no. Um, but those two are required to, to do all the training, um, but not additional teachers, no. Did you have to budget for instruments? So do, do the kids get to keep their instruments to bring home? How does that work? So that wasn't an additional budget, no. Okay. Um, that, that was already there. Our district supports it. I mean, so our, it wasn't an additional ask, no. We had those supplies in the schools, and then we've been adding as the school has been growing. Um, so I'd say no, but that may not be the same answer in another school that doesn't already have the supplies. Um, because they will need quality supplies. The last thing you want to do is move a kid into an instrumental program and they not have the quality supplies. Um, so that, that is definitely something to consider, even though we didn't have to. Hi, Mary Dickerson. I'm an administrator at the McLean School in Potomac, and we have children who learn differently and children who have dyslexia. And in the lower school, we found that our orchestra and our music program are so important to help them learn in such a good way. We're doing some kind of informal research on that. So um, I'd love to visit your school and have you visit our oh, school. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Thank I you. love that. It's, you say that we are lucky enough to be one of the only districts in our region to still offer orchestra and band for fourth and fifth graders, which is really awesome, which was one of the first projects that I did when I came to Richmond because it was, it, it was um, scattered around our district. So maybe this school had it, this school had it. And the last thing I wanted, talk about equity. Um, every school needs to have that offering. And so our school district is really big on just working on, on you know, that word. I mean, and just making sure that all of our kids have a fair shot. But in doing so, I realized when, when I would go to visit some schools, I'd talk to a kid and say, oh gosh, good, great job on the clarinet. You, is, you like your clarinet? Some of the kids would say, no, I really wanted trumpet because there weren't any left. And so I would go, wait a minute, wait a minute, that can't happen. And so that's when I really reached out to partners um, in the district. Our, our symphony has been absolutely amazing. Um, they've raised over $300,000 in the last three years. The symphony, which is a nonprofit organization who struggles to pay their own bills, you know, the nonprofits, you know, they're constantly looking for funds and they, they're giving it to our school system to, to purchase these instruments. So, I mean, it's been amazing what's happening. I feel like I'm in a, a bubble and like, you know, how's this all happening? Um, but I just, Richmond Public Schools has a lot, um, a lot of big things that, that we want for our students. Um, and so I'm, I'm very happy to be a part of Richmond Public Schools. Like I said, I was a student, and I, that's where I learned. 
how to play the violin. So I know that if I can do it, it can happen to you know all my boys and girls. Who cares if their parents don't make tons of money? Who cares? I mean, who cares if they don't live in a big, huge house? Or that doesn't matter about what kind of musician you can be or artist. It absolutely doesn't make a difference. And some of our most talented students are those students that have the biggest struggles. Um, I mean, unfortunately, but it's, they, they, it's just amazing what each student can do with, if you just give them a chance. So, I don't know, anybody else has questions? <laughs> yes? Um, can you compare your high school success with your middle school success? And the reason I ask is because I know, um, like, like for example, middle school math, I can see how you can use music to um, help teach that. But higher math, like Calc or Algebra 2, I'm just trying to see. So what's the success? So that's a great question. Um, the program that we work with with the Kennedy Center only does K through 8. And so that's been our focus. So I do not have an answer for you for anything above 8th grade. My hope and desire is that we will make such an impact in K through, K through 8 that they will know how to learn on their own in that way in high school. But I honestly don't have an answer for you for 9 through 12 because that's not been our focus area. But great question because that's where our kids will be going, so I'm going to have to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about drama? You spoke of um, music visual arts, um, choir, theater. but no drama, how about drama? So theater, that's the answer to our reading comprehension. I mean, so truly, we do use theater. We do use theater. Um, and I don't know if you all, um, there's some tactics and some, some theater strategies on like Tableau um, that has been used in some of our elementary schools where teachers, and I witnessed this and it was fantastic, teacher wrote a story to a K-5 classroom, did not read the last two pages, the ending, and asked the students to do three tableau to describe the characters and you know setting and that kind of thing and they just had to act it out um, and the teacher checked for comprehension in that way to see if they really thoroughly understood what was going on in the story but the other piece of that was the second part of it is they had to act out what they thought the ending would be based on what had been read and it was absolutely amazing that the kids you know the, just the discussion between the, the kids in their little group no, this is what happened. Remember this character said, and, and so I, I was in awe, you know, to think that, wow. And the teachers stood back, and they were teaching and learning from each other, which was absolutely amazing, using a theater strategy. What is my time? Actually, I think we're at time. It's oh, yeah. 12.30, right? Okay. Yeah. Right? Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Thank you.